Welcome to another Peterson podcast. In this podcast, we're going to talk about moving cellular materials. Basically, this is on pages 74 through 79 of your Indiana Science textbook. First of all, a cell membrane is a semi-permeable or selectively permeable membrane, which simply means it allows some things to enter the cell while keeping other things out. So some things can go in and out of the cell, while other things are not allowed in or out of the cell. A good example of something that's like a semi-permeable membrane would be like a kitchen strainer. When you cook pasta, you usually boil that in water and then dump that into a strainer. The water easily passes through the strainer while the pasta does not. And so it's semi-permeable. Some things go through, some things do not, just like a cell membrane. Let's first talk about passive transport or transport without energy. So passive transport is the movement of a substance through a cell membrane without the use of energy. The substance goes with the concentration gradient. One example would be diffusion is one type of passive transport. It's the movement of molecules from an area where there are more of them to an area where there are less of them. So again, high concentration over here where I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dots will naturally move or diffuse into an area where there's a low concentration or only three dots. So I'm going from an area where there is more to an area where there is less. And that's called diffusion. Here's an example. Molecules dissolved in a solution are in constant random motion due to their kinetic energy. One result of this motion is that dissolved molecules become evenly distributed throughout the solution. This tendency of molecules to spread out is an example of diffusion. But how do these molecules come to be evenly distributed? Let's start with a beaker of plain water. What will happen if we now add a lump of sugar to the water? A lump of sugar is composed of many individual sugar molecules, and even as a solid lump, the individual sugar molecules are in motion. When the lump is dropped into the water, it begins to dissolve. Individual sugar molecules move randomly and constantly from the area where they are common to the area where they are scarce. This type of motion, when molecules move from areas of their higher concentration to areas of their lower concentration, is called diffusion. Diffusion continues until all the sugar molecules become evenly dispersed throughout the beaker. The rate of diffusion is affected by temperature, size of molecules, and the steepness of the concentration gradient. Although not specifically shown in this animation, this is one of the processes whereby materials are exchanged between a cell and its environment. Diffusion occurs until equilibrium is reached. This means that the molecules are equal on both sides. So it will continue to move around until it's equal on both sides and you don't have any more diffusion. Osmosis is the diffusion of water through a cell membrane. So a lot of times when we're talking about diffusion with regard to cells, we're talking about the movement of water, and that so that would be osmosis. I did post a, a video on this. The passive transport video that I showed you during the PowerPoint is available on YouTube. Active transport is a little different. Now, active transport takes place when energy is used to move materials through a membrane. This is when substances go against a concentration gradient, so it requires energy. This occurs when a substance is needed in the cell, even though the amount already in the cell is at a higher concentration than outside the cell. So the example that was in your book and that we went over in class was, say, nutrients moving into the roots of plants. 
This requires a carrier or transport protein to bind with the needed particle to move it through the cell membrane. So again, it requires energy. Remember, cellular energy is in the form of ATP. It activates that protein to move a material from an area where there is less to an area where there is more. You can see if it was acti a passive transport, the natural movement would be from high to low. But since this is active transport, we're going the opposite direction, and that requires energy. Again, I showed you another video on this. Uh, the active transport segment is, again, also available on YouTube.